The NBA's players are famous for a lot of things, athleticism, work ethic, being cultural icons to millions. But some are also famous for controversy both on and off the court, and many just cannot seem to come to grips with the game's rules. Today we'll be going over some of the NBA's most controversial players in its history, as well as reveal to you the man who holds the most fouls in the history of the game. Be sure to stick around till the end to hear it all. First up, Latrell Sprewell swings his way into history. December 1st, 1997 was the day Latrell Sprewell's rep changes forever. Sprewell was reprimanded by Warriors coach PJ Carlissimo for not putting in enough effort during practice. He told Carlissimo to back off, but of course the coach didn't heed that. So Sprewell grabbed him by the throat, threw him to the floor, and threatened to kill him. When teammates dragged Sprewell off, he left practice off, only to return later on to further assault Carlissimo with some haymakers. For this shocking offense, Sprewell was suspended for 68 games Games, just enough to avoid the jokes, you see, and lost his sponsorship with Converse. You probably won't be shocked to hear the Warriors traded Sprewell to the Knicks, where he would go on to play quite well and slowly rebuild his public image. His career would continue with him playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves up until 2004 when his contract was up. He was offered a sum of $21 million for three years, but declined this offer and demanded more. He's quoted as telling them that he had a family to feed. Goodness, I knew raising a family was costly, but but when 21 mil isn't enough, you just know the system's broken. Anyway, he held out until a team would pay him what he felt he was owed, only to simply never play again. It's possible Sprewell was oblivious to the thin ice he'd been standing on with the league since 1997. Next, we have Isaiah Thomas and his endless rivalry with Michael Jordan. Isaiah Thomas will go down in history as an inspiring leader and an all-time point guard. His bitter feud with Michael Jordan will also follow him forever. It's a pretty famous feud, all things considered. Jordan held a massive grudge against Thomas for a variety of incidents. But we only have time for the top stories, so let's talk about Pistons bad boys. That day, Thomas and the Pistons coach Chuck Daly would put out a hit on the legend, with gritty players like Rick Mahorn, Bill Lambeer, and Dennis Rodman fouling Jordan anytime he so much as sniffed the basket. Granted, stopping to smell the hoop is kind of a strange thing to do in the middle of an NBA game, but it was still uncalled for. What really puts a damper on Thomas's legacy is his exclusion from the 1992 Dream Team. For the 1992 Olympics, the USA sent a truly all-time squad over to Barcelona, with greats like Jordan, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson making the court. But Isaiah Thomas was left out, despite being still in his prime. This snub was as glaring as could be, and caused a major stir. While Jordan never admitted to pulling any strings on this, it's easy to believe that he'd have never played on the Dream Team if Thomas were a part of it. And now we have the self-sabotaging J.R. Smith, a talented player for sure, the flashy scorer had no shortage of controversies, many of them quite odd. In addition to serving 24 days in jail for reckless driving, Smith was once fined $50,000 for untying other players' shoelaces he throws. Not nice at all, that, and has even been suspended for throwing soup on an assistant coach in Cleveland. And no, we're not making that up. Smith was one of the most hated NBA players out there, at least by Cleveland fans. During the 2018 NBA Finals, when he played for the Cavs against the Warriors. It was classic clutch time here. Game one of the finals with a tied score of 107 and less than five seconds remaining. George Hill misses the potential game-winning shot at the free throw line. Then there's J.R. Smith with the rebound and an easy opportunity to put the ball in the hoop, but he just doesn't. Smith would go on to admit that he thought the Cavs were leading at the time, hence he's simply dribbling away from the basket to run off the clock. This would lead to the game going into overtime, where of course the Cavs would lose. This player is Meta Sandiford Artex who inspires anything but world peace. Back in 2004, Meadow was involved in the most controversial on-court fight in NBA history, the Malice at the Palace. Formerly called Ron Artest, he caused a bit of a stir when he changed his name to Meadow World Peace in 2011. Let's all take a moment to appreciate the irony of his name. He would go on to change it again to Meta Sandiford Artest in 2020. Despite being unpredictable and hot-headed to a fault, Meadow was a huge contributor to the Indiana Pacers from 2002 to 2006. He scored about 20 points per game and was a strong defender to be certain. The Palace incident would go down in history and not the good kind, turning Meta into one of the most hated NBA players in the league. The infamous game would see the Pacers take on the Pistons in Detroit, where Meta would give a hard foul to Ben Wallace with the mere minutes left in the final quarter. In response, Wallace would shove Meta, and things would escalate from there into an all-out brawl between both teams. It all looked to be dying down when a fan would throw a cup at 
Meta. This provoked him to jump into the stands and look to attack the one responsible. The melee continued, with fans and players alike now involved in the carnage. For this, Meta was suspended for the league for 86 games. And now for the two men with the highest amount of career personal fouls, Karl Malone and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. There's no denying that both Malone and Abdul-Jabbar are both absolute legends, icons of the sport, and naturally, each are Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famers. But goodness gracious, were these guys ever prone to technical fouls. Kareem was seemingly just looking to break every record he could, as when he retired, he had claimed tons of prestigious accolades. He was the all-time leader in points, games played, minutes spent in the paint, he even has the record for most career wins. Maybe personal fouls were just another thing he wanted to be the very best at. He amassed a truly staggering amount of them, totaling 4,657 throughout his career. That's a strong record. You may be wondering why we're mentioning Carl Malone in this same entry. He's at a very, uh, respectable second place, bringing home 4,578 career fouls for himself. But he's also tied to another infamous fouling record. On April 9th, 1990, the Malone-led Utah Jazz took on the Phoenix Suns in an overtime battle. There, the Jazz laid claim to one of the most dubious records in NBA's history, as the team scored the maximum amount of fouls in a game, recording 52. Malone was admittedly not the highest defender of the night, but not for lack of trying, as he claims five of these 52 personal fouls. It might go without saying that the Jazz did not win that game, though it was a very close 119 to 115 affair. Finally, the patron saint of controversy, Dennis Rodman. We mentioned Dennis Rodman in Isaiah Thomas's entry, where he was but one of a handful of Pistons bad boys that tried to take out Michael Jordan. But his track record goes far beyond that. He's really a one-of-a-kind NBA player, for better and or worse. With five NBA championships, two Defensive Player of the Year awards, and two all-star team appearances to his name, he's a decorated competitor for sure. But let's be real, he's famous for being Dennis Rodman. Larger than life in every sense of the word, Rodman's many piercings, heavy ink, and vibrant hair colors made sure that you'd never have trouble picking him out of a lineup. And he had his clashes with everyone, from teammates to opposing players to team management. He's been in the tabloids time and time again for all sorts of reasons, ranging from wrestling on a WCW pay per view, marrying himself, getting into relationships with Madonna and Carmen Electra, and of course the 48-hour party trip to Las Vegas he took during the 1998 NBA Finals. And yes, he's had no shortage of controversy. Just cherry-picking here, on January 15th, 1997, Rodman tripped over a cameraman, Eugene Amos, during a game. A simple accident, of course, but Rodman didn't seem to see it that way, as he responded by kicking Amos right between the legs. That's not even legal in UFC, let alone the NBA. For this, Rodman was suspended for 11 games, which seems light compared to what we've seen so far, but he also paid Amos an out-of-court settlement of $200,000. This is not the only time Rodman's assaulted court staff, though, as he's also headbutted a referee in 1996, earning himself a six-game suspension and a $20,000 fine. And that's all the time we have for today's video. Did you learn something shocking today? Can you believe how high Carl Malone's total foul count is? Which of these players do you believe is the most controversial figure? Or did we perhaps miss out on a strong contender for the title? Would you like to see us do the same topic for other sports? Be sure to let us know your thoughts down in the comments below, and until next time, thanks for watching.